Morocco has been hit by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake, the deadliest in 120 years. The death toll has crossed the 2,800 mark. The residents are reeling under the aftermath of the quake. Scores of them have been displaced. They are seeking refuge in tents. Several countries, along with the Moroccan authorities, are now trying to get humanitarian aid to as many people as possible as we speak. But what is the on-ground situation like? To give us a better perspective of what exactly is happening in Morocco, we are now being joined by Adnan Benis, Managing Director at Morocco World News, and he is joining us live from Morocco. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here on Vionsa. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for your attention. Right. Now, Adnan, this is the deadliest earthquake to have hit Morocco. What is the on-ground situation like right now? Well, uh, right now, everybody is, uh, is uh, combating time to go and rescue as many people as possible. Uh, the, the, the government under King Mohammed VI instructions have deployed military uh, since uh, they want to, to use all the, what's in their power to rescue people and to go to the high Atlas Mountains so that they can do right. whatever they can rescue as many as possible just to to let you know the area this is a very very hard mountainous area it's the high atlas mountains it's the highest mountains in north africa and it's a, it's a it's an area approximately 200,000 square meters all mountainous and there are small small tiny villages scattered all over the place and uh, as further southwest as you go it becomes remote as you go deep into the, the mountainous area and there are few families here, few families in other mountains, mm. few families between each other, two, three, four kilometers. And the, the, the smaller roads that they used to have are all destroyed. So this is how hard it is for any country, whichever this country is, to, to, uh, to do it in the course of two, three days. This is a massive, massive earthquake. Uh, lots of people in remote areas and it's just really delicate uh, situation to, to cope with. But Moroccan government is doing all it can to, uh, to help people and to, to do, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to collaborate with Moroccan people because uh, I've been here since uh, the day before yesterday and I've seen the solidarity between a lot of Moroccans a uh, lot of people have called me if they need if we need anything uh, because we called uh, up and people to to help us uh, translate for foreign journalists foreign aid workers and lots and the lots of people have uh, have told us they are ready to do that so um, right mr uh, no. Right, absolutely. I, I was just coming to that, that this is the deadliest earthquake to hit Morocco in 120 years. And the rescue yes. operations is currently underway, like you mentioned. It's difficult to get people out of those remote areas and the rugged Atlas Mountains. We get all of that. But talk to us as to what caused the earthquake and how many people are currently affected. Well, it's an earthquake. Earthquake. We don't know what is what caused the earthquake. And I'm, I'm not a, a geologist, but Morocco is a... Uh, always receives earthquakes, but not as hard, not as big as this. Uh, mm. uh, but these earthquakes usually happen in the north of Morocco, uh, in, uh, towards the Mediterranean. Uh, in a town, in the surrounding town of Al Fasima, yes, we we have earthquakes once in a while, but those are mild ones, 3.5 earthquakes. They don't they don't do major uh, damage. In 2000, in 2003. Yes, there was an earthquake uh, that did some dam the big damage in uh, the town of Al Husima, uh, where 400, 500 people died and uh, some devastation. But the, the, the government uh, learned from that uh, and uh, started building uh, uh, buildings with anti-seism technique. Now the same thing is, is in Marrakesh. Marrakesh has the same technique. But in these areas of the high Atlas Mountains, which are uh, mountainous areas and old areas where people have been living there for thousands of years, their house, houses are made out of clay. So it's not easy to do, yeah. to do this, this technique in those areas. And uh, we're talking about approximately 60, 70,000 people all over this area. Right. Also, a lot of countries have now swung into action and are providing aid to Morocco. But 
it, it looks like that it is not accepting everyone's aid. Why is that? Uh, that is totally wrong. That is, uh, that is a rumor that has been circulating, unfortunately, all over the world. And they, we don't know why this is happening. Instead of uh, supporting and praying for Morocco and Mor Moroccans, some international media, unfortunately, are uh, just uh, uh, circulating misinformation. And as, as uh, right now, I uh, was talking to my team and he told me that the French uh, yeah. foreign minister denied that Morocco said no to more to French aid. Right. And unfortunately, the French media was circulating that we are, we, we, we are not accepting uh, foreign aid. No country in the world will say no to, to aid. This is an earthquake. This is a devastation, a uh, natural disaster. We're not uh, going to say no. But those countries who offered aid mm. are here on the ground. Those who only offered lip service, they didn't bring anyone. So okay. we are... We are receiving a lot and a lot of people. And as a friend of mine who is Indian, American Indian told me, there are uh, some Indian NGOs who are here in Marrakesh on the ground. And they are also offering whatever they can to, to, uh, to, to help uh, ease the situation. Not. So we're not, we're not saying no to foreign aid. We're saying no to false information. Because this time, it's not time of politics. It, right. It's time of solidarity. It's time of support. It's right. time of prayer. Right. Just a follow-up to that. Um, so you mean to say that there has been no French aid that has been provided? The French Foreign Minister earlier came out with a statement saying that um, that they are ready to provide aid to Morocco if they accept it. Um, uh, the, uh, as I said, uh, it's not it's not a, it's not a, a time for PR campaigns. Uh, we are accepting aid. Okay. You, you don't have to, to say if we accept. So we are accepting aid. Just bring your aid, bring your rescue team, and our borders are open. You know, the Moroccan, Morocco is a sovereign country, and there, there is a protocol, and there are rules in the country. And uh, the, there are protocols between uh, uh, diplomacy, Absolutely. and I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are calls between them. But Morocco is, is totally open. Uh, case in point, we have uh, we have uh, Spanish, uh, English, Tunisian, Senegali, uh, Qatari, U UAE, I Italian aid workers mm. here, Israeli, they are on the ground. So absolutely. this this is absolutely a false information being circulated all over the world. Right. Uh, my last question to you, Adnan. What is the way forward for Morocco after um, going through that deadly earthquake? How will Morocco well, build itself up back? Uh, uh, at this moment, uh, our military and uh, aid workers are battling time to uh, to rescue as many people as possible. Mm. And uh, as, as of yesterday, the, the, the Prime Minister of Morocco held uh, a discussion with the government talking about the, the, the upcoming days, how they are going to rehabilitate and rebuild the area. But right. as I said, the area is so vast and it is going to take a long time to uh, to do that. But at the moment, what is uh, important to say is that so the winter time is coming and these are high mountains and uh, we're, we're afraid that uh, the, the, the cold and the rain may, uh, may uh, jeopardize the situation. So we're also trying our best as Moroccans, as governments, to uh, to do whatever we can to help these people so that they don't have a uh, worse situation. Right, and now um, it's tough time for Moroccans out there, and we hope that the country is able to build itself back as soon as possible. But thanks very much for taking our time and sharing your insights with us on this story. Thank you so much.